Good morning, everyone. This is Stacy, the 911 Stitcher. Welcome to my video about cross stitch. Today is Saturday, December maybe 12th, 2020. This is video 53, and it's a tutorial video. I've had several people ask for a tutorial video on how to make floss tags. Now, a lot of people who are new to cross stitch don't know what a floss tag is. It's something fun that people like to use for their floss to kind of keep it more organized and keep it a little bit more, um, you know, put together with their projects. There's a lot of cute bags out there. You've probably seen project bags and we like to put all of our stuff together, our chart, our fabric, our floss, and a lot of people like to use floss tags. So what floss tags are, they're basically a tag punch that's been punched from a little, uh, puncher that you can buy online through Amazon or through Michaels. I got mine through Michaels and they're just a floss tag. It looks like this. It's got a hole up here, a bigger hole for the floss on the bottom. This hole is for the ring. Now my floss tags, this is just an example, look like this. There's, these are just a few that I've made along the way. And here's what it looks like with the floss hanging down. So what people like to do with their floss is put them all together on a ring just like this a two and a half inch I like the three inch if I'm doing a big project and take your ring and put them all together with your project super easy they hang real nice now I just throw mine in a bag so but it really is nice to keep the floss together like this and let it just hang on a floss tag so in order to make a floss tag you're going to need a few things and i'll show you what you'll need to make them first of all find some pretty paper again my floss tags this one happens to be from a postcard i got from the netherlands you can use postcards you can use wrapping paper which is thin and i'm going to show you how to thicken it up but you could use any kind of background, uh, scrapbook paper, background paper, um, greeting cards, all kinds of fun paper that you can use for your floss tags. And it's a great way to reuse a gift card that's maybe old and you know, you're know you kind of not really interested in having it displayed anymore. So just chop it up, make it some floss tags and you still have your card. And so this was a postcard from the Netherlands this particular tag, these two here were both greeting cards, the ones in the middle. So I took a card someone had sent me and made it into a couple of floss tags. And again, it's on a two and a half inch. This one happens to be a two and a half ring you can get on Amazon and put it together real nice, fold it up, put it together in your project bag. So you'll need paper of some sort. Uh, again, I get mine off of Amazon sometimes. I go to the scrapbook area of say a craft store like Michael's or Hobby Lobby will work. Any kind of pretty paper you wanna use, it doesn't matter if it's real um, thick because I'm gonna show you how to thicken it up. Now I happen to have a couple of different background papers here, as you can see, they're real pretty. These are simple because you can, no matter where you punch, you're gonna get a pretty picture. These you have to line up and I'm gonna show you how to line these up but here's some more pretty paper that I really like. It's from a Victorian Christmas that uh, if you're interested, I can let you know where to get that. But these, as you can see, are in a square box. So your floss tags are gonna wanna pay attention to how you punch them because they might you don't wanna punch it in the middle and then now you've got this floss tag that's like two different pictures. <laughs> so I'll show you how to do that. So anyway, like I said, it doesn't have to be thick paper. You could even use wrapping paper if you want and I'll show you how to do that too. What are some other things you're going to need to make a floss tag? You're going to need, if you want to make it thick, now these are mine that are really thick floss tags that I've made. You can see they're nice and sturdy. This part right here, the, the fragile area of the tag that you're going to hang your floss from, I like it nice and thick so it doesn't break. I like mine white on the back so I can write on them what color it is if it's dmc if it's a silk or if it's uh, um, any other kind of floss that you want to use you can mark it and let yourself know what kind it is and if you want to reuse them if you want to cover it up you can always put a label just get some white sticky labels or whatever and post it over you know paste it over it or tape it over 
to reuse it. But a lot of people like to use background paper together. So they've got a, now this is not color coordinated, but just an example, but you could use these together, put your paper together, and now you've got a design on the front and back of the tag. But like I said, I like mine white because I like to write on the back, but I'll show you how to do both. So you're going to need a couple of punchers. The first puncher you're gonna need is a big one, and this is what it looks like. It measures, is it six? Eight? I'm gonna put the measurements down below of the actual size of the machine. So when you go to the craft store and you see the puncher, you'll know you're getting, and it, it, you could see on the back the size of the actual tag through the punch. So this is mine, comparing it to my hand, it's about that big. This is the style and the the shape of the tag that I wanted. They have scallops, they have different choices that you can get. So it's basically just a puncher. The next kind of puncher that you're going to need in addition to this one is the puncher for the center of the hole it, for, to hold the floss. And again, I'll put all the measurements down below, but you can see the size here, according to my hand, it's a little bit smaller. And on the front of the puncher, it reads 5 eighths of an inch, 1.59 centimeters. So it's just a circle and it's a puncher so that you can punch the center of the floss tag for the, for the floss. Next thing you're gonna need is just a regular hole puncher that you can buy in any office store. It is for the ring that the floss tag or that the floss ring goes through. And the last thing you're gonna need is a glue stick and a pair of scissors. I like to make my floss tags thick, so I have to use a piece of construction board. Now this thing is huge. I got it at Hobby Lobby for 29 cents. If you need the number, it's 740084 on the sticker. 29 cents at any craft store. You can see it's giant. You can get a lot of tags out of it. It's nice and thick. I chose one that's not shiny because be kind of watch what you're choosing because they do have more expensive construction paper like this or poster board that's shiny. Some of them have a design on the front of it. You know, like you can feel the little rivets on the side of it. So those are like $2 for just one piece. And I mean, unless you want to add some shine to say the back of your tag, I only buy the matte one because it's just fine for me and it's 29 cents. So I've cut mine, my uh, board in half so it's a little easier to manage. And so let's go punch some tags and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, now is the fun part, making the floss tags. You've got your paper that you've picked out, you've got your punchers, You've got your little hole punch, got your ring, my glue stick, everything's ready to go. I've got a pair of scissors. So let's talk a little bit about the punchers. The punchers have different shapes. So this is what my tag is gonna look like when I punch it. Now I'll put all the measurements of my big tag and my small tag in the notes below on the actual size of the product. And I'll also put the size of what the tag comes out to be. I'm happy with this size, so I'll let you guys know what mine is. I want to say it's like two and a half or three and a half inches. I think it's three and a half inches from top to bottom. But whatever puncher you decide to get, the top of it will show you what the shape is. And I bought a scallop one. These are really popular too. You can buy scallops. You can make these into floss tags as well. But the bad thing about this one is it's too small. So uh, you, you have to remember, you need space for the circle that's gonna hold the floss, and you need a little tiny space up here for the ring. So this scallop size is way too small. Now, floss tags, they can use, you can make these tags without the little centerpiece here. Pick, just picture this filled in with a picture. And you can make these for gift bags, you can make them for presents, and they're a lot of fun to use and not just have to use them for floss tags. Christmas, here's some Christmas ones I made. And I plan on I plan on making these for my gift bag, my gift bags and my pres my Christmas presents. So the first thing you're gonna do, now I like my paper thick. I mentioned before, 
Mine are super thick so that this part here, which is the delicate area where you're gonna be pulling floss on and off, you want this part right here to be sturdy. So I'm gonna make mine sturdier. Now I have a piece of paper that I chose. I chose some Victorian rose paper and you can see it's real just flimsy. Same with wrapping paper. Wrapping paper is even more flimsy. So you're gonna to want to thicken it up a little bit and make it a real sturdy tag. Another thing I wanna mention about the tag holder or the tag maker itself, they come here like this. This is the puncher. This is what you're gonna push down to use. Now mine you'll notice when I flip mine upside down, it's missing the plastic part. And I'll tell you why. Here's an example, the, on the scallop, this still has the sliding plastic on the bottom. Now, when you notice, like I said, mine has, this plastic's been removed. Now, this part here probably is a safety issue, so you don't get your hands in there and you don't cut your hands, but it just pops down. You, you, tat, you uh, punch your piece and then the paper stays inside. You just flip this up and you take it out. And it's a little bit time consuming and I took, I decided to take mine off. So you'll notice mine are a little bit naked. <laughs> and it's just faster for me. I, the tag comes out, I just take it out, it's a lot faster for me. So I don't recommend taking this off for safety issues, but again, I like mine off so I can actually get a real clear view of what I'm punching. And so I can make my tags a little bit faster. Okay, so, if you're in a bind, say you don't have, you want to make, you want tags, you want to stitch, and what I did is I didn't feel like making, I didn't have a lot of the stuff, I didn't have any pretty paper, I didn't have the construction board, so I went on Amazon and I bought some tags. And again, these are, are for gifts, they're for, they're not very pretty, but you can jazz them up with some stickers if you want, but I got them off Amazon. They came really nice. Now this cording is for the tag itself to use for a gift or use to put on a present, which is pretty. But again, the tags themselves, and they even included some little ones here for gifts and bags. So I'll put the link below to that Amazon if I can find it again. So anyway, this is what I bought because I was in a bind. I had absolutely no tags. I just wanted something cheap and easy to use. So these are always available on Amazon. I've seen different holidays. I saw some Halloween ones. So again, if you wanna make it into a floss tag, you take your puncher. Again, another thing you'll notice, I punch upside down. And what you could do, you could easily stick it in just like this, but I don't know where the circle is. I like to know what I'm punching. So I flip mine around and I line it up, I make sure that these sides here and this side here is even. So make sure they're even, that's what I like. And I punch, just like that. I actually had two accidentally together. So now I've got a really cute floss tag that I just bought off of Amazon and punched my own hole for my floss. They're not that sturdy. I like them a little sturdier, but you can still use them and it's fun to just do something quick, something easy, and this part's already done. So just an idea. Next, uh, next, another easy thing to do is, I was in a bind the other day because again, I had no floss tags, I didn't have much paper, and I decided I wanted to just make plain, easy white tags. So again, when I use my puncher, sure, you could put this in, and you could slide it and make your punch, but how do you know you're all the way down? You're, how do you know you're gonna get the bottom of the tag? I like to flip mine upside down and line it up. And now I know I can move it side to side and I can actually see what I'm punching. Cause see, how do you know you're not gonna be like this and get it crooked if you are punching it this way? You know, it, it's, it's better, to, it's easier to describe when I've got a piece of paper, I'll show you. So say you just want some quick and easy tags that are nice and thick and sturdy like this poster board. I just grab my tag, I line it up, and I punch. And it comes out just like this. Now, 
because I just had elbow surgery, I don't have a lot of hand strength to grip it when there's extra paper on top, when I glue stick it on. So I'll show you how I, I do it. But in the meantime, okay, so now I've got a tag. I, this is a good example why I do it this way instead of doing punching it this way. Because now, if you do it with it face down like this and you stick it in the machine, you don't know how close you are. I mean, if you're over here, you're pretty safe. You're going to make a good tag. But I like, I, I guess I'm cheap. I like to use all my paper. So I will hold it in one hand, slip the paper in. See, obviously you're not going to punch it here. Slide it over just like this and punch. And see the tag just pops out. Now with that plastic thing, you have to slide it and then work your finger in there to get it out. So what am I gonna do with these boring floss tags <laughs> or gift bag tags? I'm gonna jazz them up. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I sometimes put them together just to save time. Again, you could easily push these in just like this and punch, but I like to do them this way so I know exactly. And I just line them up on each side here and over here so I know they're kind of lined up and I punch. And there we go. Now we've got two floss tags. So you want to make them pretty and you may want to do it quick. Grab a sticker book, grab any stickers from Target or from your local stores. And you may have seen on Brenda and the Serial Star this amazing sticker book. I bought it. I use stickers all the time. I have always used stickers to jazz up my envelopes when I mail things. And this book is perfect. It's on Amazon. It's also available. Target.com had it. So what did I do recently? I just opened the book and I looked for a pretty picture. Now a lot of mine are used up. So let's see. Got to find one that fits. So how about... A flower here put it on your tag and now you've got a jazzed up little piece of a floss tag that's got a little something on it and isn't quite so boring again you can write on the back what your floss color is just like I did here let's see here 601 on the back and again you've got yourself a really nice floss tag with something so easy as a sticker. Super easy idea. And again, you can put them on gift bags. Now I put the sticker a little bit too high because now you're gonna need something to put the little, if you're going to use it for a present or a gift and you wanna use the little uh, cotton holder that they sent in this little kit, or you want to use a ribbon or whatever you want to do to hold the tag on. I put the sticker a little too short. So just line it up, punch, and there you go. But see, I caught the sticker. You're going to want to move the sticker down a little bit. So in this case, let's do another one. Let's find a pretty design. That might fit. Let's see if it fits. It's a little bit big, but you can turn it. Yep, that one's a little bit too big. Let's find another flower. Here's one. Perfect. Or butterfly. You can find a small one that fits. So save room for the circle for your ring and just put your sticker on just like that so now you can just take your puncher and put it on your ring just like that and you've got a cute little tag with something so easy as a sticker super easy okay let's talk about making your paper a little bit thicker so i took one of these and I took one of these. Here's what I do. Grab your glue stick, 
grab your construction board, figure out what side you want to use. Well, obviously this is really not that attractive. These I want to use as a puncher and this paper. This paper is perfect because no matter where you punch, you're going to get a really beautiful tag. So I'm going to go ahead and use the back. I'm going to use this part here and take your glue stick and just glue the heck out of it. Make sure and get the sides, because if you don't get the sides, they will lift up off of your tag, which is kind of a pain in the neck. So get your, get your sides especially, and just glue stick. Glue, glue, glue. Now this glue is perfect because it goes on a color but dries clear. So, just like that, flip it over and paste it on. Now, if you're using wrapping paper especially, wrapping paper is very thin, sometimes you're gonna get some creases. All you do is take your hand like this, push down and get the creases off of your paper and it should come off, uh, it should smooth out really nicely, okay? So now I've got my other piece of paper. Now this one, as you can tell, has specific areas that you have to punch. So for example, we'll use this as an example. This is why I like to do it upside down because if I stuck this in and punched it just the way it was, actually that one comes out pretty good. If you can see, Santa Claus comes out pretty darn good. But what about, so let's try the rabbit. Oh, the rabbit too. So see, you know you're gonna punch exactly, you know, if you were over a little bit, now you're cutting the flowers off. I want to move it to the right just a little bit and get all those pretty flowers and cut them off. This is a good example. You've got your flowers down here. You've got the candle top up there. If you punch just like this, you're going to cut the candle top off, the flame off. So what you can do, I'll show you in a few minutes. Let's glue this down so that way it can start drying. So again, lay it face down. Put a lot of glue. Glue sticks are so handy. Put a bunch of glue, especially around the edges. Okay. And put it down here. There you go. Press them down so they stay nice and stuck to the paper. Okay, we're gonna let this dry. And in the meantime, what I've got going on here is I put some pretty paper. This lighting makes it look a little bit yellow, but I put some pretty paper down that is already dry. So I can go ahead and punch and show you an example of how I punch and why I do it the way face, you know, upside down. So this is super pretty. I'm gonna, no matter where I punch on this, it's gonna be a really beautiful picture. Say I don't want this stuff down here. You know, the key is cool. I like the key. So you can just experiment and play around with how you want it to look. So maybe you do want the key on there. I think that looks pretty cool. You're gonna wanna go off to the side a little bit like this. You don't wanna punch right, right in front of the key at the bottom because keep in mind, you're going to use the circle to punch your tag. Now you've lost part of your key. Okay? So if you punch if you punch it without off-centering it a little bit, like say here, and, and we're talking about the picture of the key. If I were to make it in the very center, keep in mind I'm going to put that circle down for the floss. You're going to the key disappears. Move it over to the left a little bit just like this. Just like that. Right about there, okay? Punch it down. And now, when you punch, even when you line it up, your key still shows. Came out really, really good. And then you're gonna just take your hole puncher for the, for the ring, and you've got your really cute floss tag with your key showing. Okay, now another thing I wanna mention is this paper has been glued just like this, okay? So what I'm gonna do when this dries, I'm gonna take some scissors, 
cut, I can actually do it now. I'm gonna cut here to make it a little easier to punch. Just like this. That way when I use my punching machine, it's a lot easier to use. Okay, so these two are still wet. We're not gonna punch those right now. These have been dried for some time. So you can see I've got the construction paper on the back, I've got the pretty paper on top. So I'm gonna punch some more stuff. So I'm gonna line this up and see what it looks like. Now, I don't like the writing. I don't, nobody's gonna really know what this says. I think it's kind of ugly. I would rather have the pretty picture down here. So I'm gonna take my scissors and cut this part of it off. Now, no matter where you punch, it's really, really pretty. Especially this one. And here. <clears throat> and again, you if you want that leaf right here, offset it a little bit. Move it to the left a little. Because if you punch right in the middle, you're going to lose the picture. Because keep in mind, the circle is going right here. And you're going to lose your picture. So say you really want that leaf. Just move it to the side a little bit. Just a little. And punch. Okay. So now when you do use your circle, line it up. You've got your leaf here. See, otherwise here, you punching it, you would lose it. And again, just punch right here. Now you've got your floss tag. Nice and super thick. Let's talk about this one. The Alice in Wonderland has been so popular and I really wanted Alice to show. Now again, when you punch her out, she's going to lose part of her picture. So you're gonna wanna line it up. If I did it here, all you're gonna get are feet. I don't want just her feet. I want her right about here. So I'm going to cut, start low, but that way you don't lose too much picture. Line her up. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now keep in mind, you're going to need a room up here for your puncher for the hole for the ring. And you're also going to lose a little bit right here. So if you want to see Alice's hands, move it over a little bit. That way you can see her hands. Now keep in mind, you're gonna have a circle here punched out. You're gonna lose part of your picture. So depending how much, say, hair you want, I want more hair than that. So I'm gonna move her over a little bit. I don't mind if some of her hands are cut off, but let's offset it a little bit. Another thing about punching. So I'm ready to go. I've got it held down. That's the picture I want. Take a towel, because when it's thick like this, it's hard to punch. I can't punch it with my hand. I have to use the help of a table like this, put it down, and I punch like that. Okay, so now we've got this picture. came out really cute. I'm going to use this circle to use for my floss tag. Center it, punch, and look, I've got her hands right here, and I've got her hair. I really like this tag. So now I'm gonna use this. And again, just line it up to where you want. Sometimes I like my, if you want your tags to hang all the same, you want this here to line up on your ring. Some people, it doesn't matter, they don't mind. They don't mind if it's like, kind of like this on your ring. I like mine nice and centered, especially if I'm selling my floss tags. So what I do is I get a tag that I've already punched, line it up, and put my puncher, you can actually line your puncher up and feel where the hole is, and punch. Now your holes line up perfect, okay? And you've got an Alice in Wonderland, you've got a pretty tag, and keep on punching. So. Sometimes you do want some wording. You know, sometimes wording looks really pretty. Maybe I want one where it says Wonderland is better. So I'm gonna figure I'm gonna need to cut my paper 
probably right around here. But I have to remember the tag. You know, you, it's all about playing with the tag machine and figuring out. So this was pretty. The tree and the flower. Again, keep in mind, you're going to lose this part of the picture right here. So just line it up how you want it to look and punch. Okay, and there it is. And again, line this up, center it on both sides. Now see this side, you can see I've got too much. Move it over so it's nice and even on both sides, here and here, and punch. Okay, take your thing here. Again, I like mine to line up pretty good. I put these together. I take my hole puncher, put the little punching head here and just kind of move it around. You can feel it and punch. Okay, now I've got all kinds of tags. Sorry guys, I keep moving the camera. Okay, let's take a look at these. Now these are pretty specific to where you need to punch. Now obviously these are separate pictures. So what I'm gonna do is cut right along here. It doesn't have to be even. Now these are specific because they're its own individual picture. You have to line these up a little bit better. Okay, here. You've got the cat. You're gonna cut off her hat if you don't cut a little more down off the bottom. So it depends. Do you wanna cut off her hat? Or do you, if you don't mind losing this part down here. Now I think her purse is really cute. I would like to move it over a little bit and see if I can save her purse and get that in. So I'm gonna cut little bit more down here, real close to the perch, but not too much. So I can get the puncher higher. There we go. Okay, so that now it has brought this part down. Now keep in mind, you're gonna use this to make the, the ring up on top. So you're gonna wanna bring her down a little bit more, so I'm probably going to lose a little bit of the purse, but it's gonna be close. And I also, I want to keep in mind I'm losing this part here because I'm going to punch it out. So I might want to move it even over a little bit more to the left. So when I punch, I lose this part and not the purse. Hopefully you guys can see that. There's a shadow on it. And I'll hold it a little bit closer so you can see. So you don't want to cut off her hat. You don't want to cut off her purse. Right about there might be perfect. You're gonna lose just the bottom part of the purse, but you can still see she's holding it. So put this down on, it's, it helps to put a towel down so it doesn't slide and punch. And there you go. Now you've saved her hat. You've got her little bit of her purse. Now you're gonna punch the circle here. Probably gonna lose some paws, but that's okay. You can still see she has paws. And I'm gonna turn the light on behind me a little bit more so you can see. There we go. And you can see she, we've saved some of her hat. And again, just punch a hole right about here. You wanna go down, a little, you know, up a little bit because you don't wanna get too close to the edge. And there we go. You got a really cute floss tag. Same with these. You want to, depending how much of the tree you want to see, do you want to see the top and that pretty Victorian part up here? I think I do. So put it in your puncher. If you punch here, you're going to lose the top totally. And you're going to lose this part here because you're going to have to cut the bottom in order to bring it down. So when you put it in your puncher, now this is again a very good example of why I like to punch this way so I can see what I'm punching. I want that top of the tree, I want it to show. So you're gonna have to lose some of the bottom. Okay, now put it in your machine, see how you did. Okay, there we go. So now you can see, hopefully you can see around the shadow you can see the top of the tree is showing 
and the Victorian looking little arch here is still showing as well. Now, if you really wanted, you have to keep in mind, you're probably gonna lose this part right here because you need to punch the hole for the floss ring. And there's some room right here, but you're probably gonna lose the top of it. So put it in your puncher and move it around and see, see what you like. I want the top of the tree to show for sure. I think this is a pretty good area here. It's nice and centered. The top is centered with this top, so I'm okay to punch. So I put it down on the table and punch. And here it is. So I am gonna lose a little tree because I'm gonna punch this here. And I still have a little bit of room up here. Let's hope we don't lose a lot of the rows. Let's see, just line it up. And I did lose the top of the, the, top of the rows, but you can still see it's a Christmas tree. It's really pretty. You can write on the back. Now, some people, they want paper on both sides. You've seen a lot of people do that in Etsy shops. And I don't have an extra piece of paper really with me, but say I wanted this rose color on the back and I wanted this on the front. All you would do is before putting the construction paper down, you would put these back to back and see how you feel. Does it feel thick enough for you with just paper, you know, like this? Um, no, everything I have has already got construction paper on it. But put the papers back to back, see how you like them, and if they're thick enough for you, glue stick the paper back to back. If you're not happy with how thick they are, add a piece of construction paper. So you got your Christmas paper on this side, and you've got your roses on this side. And all you have to do is glue stick those together, put construction paper in the middle, and now you've got a really, really thick tag, which might be a little hard to punch, but at least you've got a pretty tag. I'll see if I can punch it. Let's just take this for example. This might be really hard with this much paper. Yep, too hard. So you're gonna to wanna to just take two regular pieces of paper, put them back to back and glue stick them and see how you feel if that feels thick enough for you guys. So in the meantime, I've got some really pretty paper going. Now because I tried to punch it and it didn't work, I'm gonna to have to cut it off. Actually, it's just this part right here. So put the paper in just like this, punch, and keep going, I'll go around it. And now I have two tags that I just glued on. They should be dry by now. I don't have any problems with the glue. And I like to do two together. You can do two together if you have the hand strength. Nope, it doesn't work, too thick. So just do one, and if you're happy where the hole is, put the other one next to it, and put your little puncher in the hole, and punch. Now you've got your floss tags, the Victorian Rose floss tags. So that's it, everybody. We've made some really cute tags today. And where did Alice go? Alice has been really popular. Uh, the paper's expensive, so I don't do a lot of Alice in Wonderland, but the paper is really cute. We've got these I wanted to show you. Oh, I did show you those. I punched the candle out, and we were able to get the candle top. Let's see, no I didn't. I started to and it was too thick. So I'm gonna cut just the bottom off of that one tag. Because I want this, this is one of my favorite, favorite tags. So if I put this in here, just like this, the candle flame is going to get cut off. So I'm going to have cut down, cut down a little bit more. 
put it back in the machine and see what you think. Now the flame is not, it, it's not gonna get cut off. Looks like we have enough room. I might need to, this paper's really, um, it's so such a small piece. That's why I'm having some trouble with it. So right about there, I'm gonna get the bird. Might move it to the left a little bit. I've got the bird, I've got the flame, and I'm ready to punch. And there we go. Put the circle on. Put the floss tag or the ring holder on, and you've got the prettiest little tag. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing all the tags that I've made and how I, I hope you've made sense on how to line them up. Now I've got some. There we go. Let's do one more. How about the rabbit, the really cute Christmas rabbit? Let's line him up, perfect. Now I don't wanna lose that bow. See the blue bow? And again, hopefully you can see with the, with the shadow there, but there's a real pretty little bow. I don't like this much white showing, so I'm gonna cut part of the bottom off. And realign it. There, now we're gonna have the bow the basket is perfect. I'm real happy with how that looks. Hold it down, that's your image right there, that's your picture. Hold it down and punch. So now we just add the circle. We add this here for the ring. And we have made ourselves some of the cutest floss tags ever. So I hope I gave you guys some ideas on making the floss tags and making it fun, what to do if you're in a bind and you just want to make white ones with stickers or on Amazon, you can just buy them just like this. And again, punch the, punch the bottom, super, super, super easy. You've got yourself a floss tag with something so easy as something off Amazon. And again, they're not that thick, but at least we have some ideas here. And if you guys have any more thoughts or questions, please ask me in the comments below. But in the meantime, you guys, I will be back next week with a regular Floss 2 video. And I hope I answered all your questions here as to what the Floss tags look like and how to use them. Again, this is just the Floss tags here and our new tags that we just made here just a few minutes ago. I love that rabbit. Put them here and we can just use them for the next, next time that we need tags. Thanks everybody. And I'll see you guys next week with a regular floss tube video. Bye guys.